Hi everyone, this is Val from EurekaCrystalBeads.com with another sparkling beading video. Today's project is this pretty crystal cosmos ring. But before I get started, here's a quick reminder to check out our channel if you like what you see. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified every time we have a new posting. The products we'll be using for our crystal cosmos ring are some... We're using a 12 millimeter crystal square cushion cut stone. We're using a metal frame setting with prongs and it has little sew, sew in holes. We'll be using three millimeter bicones, four millimeter bicones, six millimeter bicones, some 11 O seed beads. We'll also be needing some monofilament. Today I'm going to be demonstrating in black, but normally I would use clear. You also need a scissors and a flat nose plier. So to start our project, we're gonna set our stone right into our metal setting. Just drop it right in. You wanna just make sure it's as flush to the frame as possible. Take your flat nose plier and just gently press onto the prongs. I always go from the opposite sides and just spin it into the, the next two sides. Okay, so now it's all set just like this. So I preset this champagne color stone because I want to make my project in this pretty um, golden color. So I'm starting off with this gold color setting that I already set. And you notice this, the holes, these two holes are close together as the opposite sides if you look would be further apart. You want to work with the side that is closer together, the holes. Our line, we're going to use a dark colored line because it's easier for um, everyone to see. And we're going to string our line into these holes from, from the inside. See, so from right under here, I'm going to slip in our line. We can do that to both sides. So our line comes up, pull our line out. Now we're going to add in our bicones. We're going to start with our four millimeter bicones. Each line will have one four millimeter bicone. And the left side, I'm going to add one six millimeter bicone. And the side with just the four will cross into the six millimeter bicone. You pull it tight, it will look like this. Now we bring our lines together just like this. And we're going to add on each side a C bead and a crystal, three millimeter bicone crystal. And on the left, we're going to add one more three millimeter bicone. And the side with just one bicone will cross into the extra bicone on the left side and pull your line tight. And it will look like this. Okay, now each line is going to have one C bead and one three millimeter bicone. Okay, then you bring your both lines together. And you're going to string up about one inch of seed beads on each line, on the, both lines together. So as long as your seed bead is covering both wires. So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and string up one inch of seed beads and I will be back. All right, so I'm back and I have strung up my one inch of seed beads here. And I just want to point out to you at this point, the amount of seed beads you have strung here will either determine the length of your ring so or the size of your ring rather so if you want to make it a little smaller of course take out a few seed beads if you want to make it a little bit bigger add in a few seed beads and while I was doing my seed beads stringing the seed beads up my beads over here kind of shifted a little so I want to make sure that I tighten this up before I continue so before I continue um, I'm just going to tighten it by just pulling my lines apart See how it automatically starts to cinch everything up and shift everything a little closer together. Just like this. And now we'll continue on the opposite side of our ring. So bring your two lines together, again, just like this. And we're gonna add on each side, we're gonna add on a three millimeter crystal and a seed bead. On our left, we're gonna add on one more three millimeter bicone crystal.
and pull your line tight together and make sure that everything looks nice and close together at this point. Now on each line, we're going to add on one three millimeter bike comb and one seed bead. And string up one six millimeter bike comb on the left line. Right line, you're going to cross through that six millimeter bike comb. So it looks like this and just pull your line tight. On each line, add on a four millimeter bike comb. And now we're going to bring our other end to the opposite side of our ring base. Now we have to go from the top down. So we're going to go into these holes here. So this line is going to go through this hole. And then this line is going to go through this hole here. So see how it brings our ring close together. Now what we have to do is we have to bring our lines together um, so that we can tighten it up and um, give it a knot to join it all together. So this line here I'm going to bring through into the opposite hole and into this one four millimeter bicone. And opposite end I'm going to do the same thing to go into the opposite hole and out and into the bicone on the opposite side and just pull your lines tight at this point again you're going to bring this line through the six millimeter bicone and you can decide if you want to knot in between here I usually try to knot right up here or you can bring it back into the ring and knot Sometimes because it's in a frame, it is a little harder. So at this point, you want to pull your lines nice and tight just to make sure there's no gaps in between. Bring this line up through this bicone. Pull tight again, and now we're going to knot. So just tie a regular square knot. Pull it tight. Okay, so here's our knot, and you always want to make sure that you don't cut right where that knot is. You want to bring your lines through at least um, one bead. So we're going to try it through this bicone. Sometimes it will fit depending on the size of your line. If not, we're going to go through the frame. All right, so I got my threads through my bicone right here, and now I can cut off my excess line. I always like to work with a little excess more than just exact because it's just easier. It's easier to have more thread than not enough. Okay, so I just cut as close as I can. So here are some of the Crystal Cosmos rings that I finished. And um, I, like I said, I use monofilament, but if you wanted to try thread, you could. Only thing it's not as, um, it won't make your ring as firm. It's gonna be kind of a floppy ring. And I'm kind of worried about that the thread might cut into that middle frame. The monofilament gives it a little bit more movement along with your finger. I just think it, it will hold up a little bit better in the long run. Um, these, this shape stone, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, um, is my favorite of all crystal fancy stones. I just love the facets, the deep facets in it, and that square just makes it very pretty. It's very timeless and elegant. And I'm hoping to get you a few more projects because I've noticed on our website that we have some gorgeous, gorgeous colors of this exact stone. You can also use other shapes of stones, maybe a pear or an emerald or something, um, whatever you want to do. But I like the square because it's very timeless. And for bicones here, just so you can see variations, this is the one we did just now with the all of the same bicones. This one I use like a variation of shades of bicone. And this part, I use the regular bicones, but for the large piece, I used a, a six millimeter round pearl. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, like always you can find all these supplies and more on the link listed below at EurekaCrystalBeads.com. Thanks for joining us.